Hi, today I'm going to try to show you some clues about drawing lens diagrams. And I'm just going to be focusing on the diagrams themselves. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult because I've only got this relatively small whiteboard. And one of the things that's true, whether we're drawing mirrors or lenses, is that we want to have as much space as possible uh, to really fully show the diagrams. But to try to help me out, I do have a special helper today. That's right, Nicolas Cage. And if uh, that's not disturbing, I, I don't know what is. Anyways, um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, just draw the principal axis, same way that we would have when we were doing our diagrams for mirrors. Okay, same deal. Now, I'm going to add something in. It's going to be a perpendicular line to that called the principal plane. And this is uh, very much an imaginary line. Uh, it's not actually in the lens because the lens is actually drawn right on top of it like that. Sorry, it's a little crooked looking. But the principal plane is where all of the refracting of light is assumed to occur. Now that's not really realistic because as light travels through the dense optical material that makes up the lens, um, it'll refract because of the shape of the lens, everything. Like in this case, I'm showing a double convex um, converging lens. But um, the way the light bends is very complicated. So what we do is we're going to draw all of our refraction happening along that line. It just makes the diagrams more easy to draw. And it actually gives a very accurate representation of what overall happens. Now, the other thing that I have to add in here is I have to put a focal point on both sides. And this is again where things are a little bit different than they are when we draw our um, regular diagrams. And I'm just trying to get this at a reasonable sort of distance. The only real rule that I'm looking at here is that we have to be as far in front on that side as we are behind on the other. So I'm just making sure that I draw this in hopefully as carefully as necessary. But we do put a focal point on both sides because with a lens, there's nothing special about one side compared to the other. So we can't um, say, oh, I can only have a focal point on one side. Now, as soon as I do put in the location of the object, that does kind of set how we're going to do, do other things in the diagram. So in my diagram here, I'm just going to use this to draw the object. I'm going to draw my object here. Now one of the things that we have to be a little bit careful about is that if this was a mirror diagram, that would mean that this is the real side for images. Crazy thing with lens diagrams is that most of the things that we said like that just flip around as soon as we're doing lenses. So for the image, at least, this will be the real side. We actually expect to see an image over here. It would actually be weirder to see the image appear on this side. So what I now have to start doing is drawing my three uh, different kinds of rays. Now remember, like any ray diagram, you are only allowed to draw two rays to find your answer. But I'm going to show you all three of the, the rules just so you can see what they all look like. And that way, depending on the diagram you're doing, you can kind of choose things. Now, the first rule that I'm going to use is a ray parallel to the principal axis, same as before. Um, but now instead of reflects through this focus, it's going to reflect, or refract, I should say, sorry, through this focus. So the ray comes down like that. So what we're seeing is the rays of light that are coming through here, they're going to try to converge on that focal point on the other side of the lens. That's just the nature of a converging lens such as this. Now, the second diagram or the second rule that I'm going to draw, the second ray, is using the rule through the focus refracts parallel. So I'm going to take my ray through this focus 
I've got my ray coming down. It passes through that focus, more or less, and then refracts parallel to the principal axis. Now you might recall that when we were drawing our mirror diagrams, we always said only reflected rays could produce images. Now we say only refracted rays can produce images. These are refracted rays, so they're going to be the ones that produce my image. And the image is going to appear way over here. And it's going to look like that, labeled with an I because it's an image, just like we labeled that one with an O. Now, just like we did with mirrors, essentially, the uh, bottom of my object was sitting on the principal axis. So it's still sitting on the principal axis over here. These rays show me where the top part of the image appears because they all came from the top part of that object. So things are going very much like they would have for the mirror diagram, same sort of idea. Um, we can already then say some things about the characteristics of this image. Uh, it is real because anything that appears on this side of the lens is a real image. Um, it is also inverted because it did get flipped upside down. Now here's the slightly tougher part, and if you're sketching this at home, kind of doing your own, um, it's going to depend on exactly where you placed everything. But the whole idea of enlarged, same, diminished, that's a lot harder to see in these diagrams. So my object was about five centimeters tall. My image over here is seven centimeters tall. So I'm going to say this is enlarged. Uh, if you drew one that looked practically identical to this, you might get a uh, image characteristic that was same or diminished. It's really, really easy for these to go a little bit kind of funky that way, just because of, uh, again, the way that these diagrams pop out from just slight variations in the placement of things. Now, I do still want to show you that third ray rule. And the weird part in this one is, well, where's center? Center would usually be twice as far out from where the focus is, right? But that's not the way that we use it in this one. Instead, we look at where the principal axis and the principal plane cross each other, and that is our center. And basically, what we're saying is, as much as the light would bend going into the lens at that point, it's going to unbend just as much coming out on the other side. So I bring my ray like that. And again, I have to draw my arrows showing the incident and the refracted ray, but it just cuts straight through. And you notice one thing that happens here quite nicely is we don't get a whole bunch of spherical aberration like we did in mirror diagrams where they didn't line up so nicely. Um, in this one, because we're using this principal plane as a point for all refraction, we usually get really nice matchup of the refracted rays there. So this would be all three. But remember, for your ray diagrams, you would only draw two rays. Okay, I'm just showing you all three for demonstration purposes here. Now let's just change this up a little bit for a double concave diverging lens. So we're going to draw the same elements that we had before. Principal axis, principal plane. Uh, this one again, it's going to look a, a little bit crooked and everything. All I'm really trying to get across to you is that this is definitely a double uh, concave diverging uh, lens. And now I'll still draw in the focal points like we had before. So let's still see where they were. So I'm just going to redraw them in like that. And I'm still going to put my object out over here. Now the part that's weird about these is that in the previous diagram you could see where everything focused on this side because it converges the light. Now this is a diverging lens, so it does the exact opposite. It causes light to spread apart out on this side. 
So let's see how that's um, shown in the way the ray diagrams appear. So I'm going to draw, again, a ray parallel to the principal axis, because that part of the rules don't change. Now, previously what we did is we refracted to this focal point. Now we're going to refract so that it appears that it came from that focal point. And remember, when we did mirrors, reflected rays could be extended. Same deal here, refracted rays can be extended. So this is a refracted ray that does that. And you can see this is living up to the name of diverging. This ray of light spreads off really crazy. There's no way that that would uh, be doing the regular sort of converging on like a focal point on that side. Now I'll draw in the second one. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to draw the third ray first, just because uh, that one usually draws better for people. So, and it actually gives us a much quicker answer also. So I'm going to draw my ray, and it does the same boring thing that it did in the last diagram, where it travels straight through where the principal plane and principal axis meet. Now here's the neat part, and it's why this is deceptively easy. Um, this is my refracted ray. If I extended it back here as a virtual ray, it's actually right on top of where its own incident ray is. So there really is a dotted line right along here that is the refracted virtual ray. That means that they cross right there, which means I actually am producing an image there. And I do want to try to draw this for you so you can see it, but still draw it as dotted lines, because that is where virtual rays are meeting. So it does have to be drawn dotted. Uh, and that is my image. It would be a virtual erect, diminished image. That's the one that's producing there. Now, usually these would be the two rays that I would suggest you draw, uh, because otherwise uh, drawing the third ray um, quite often just kind of screws people up. There's elements of it that they tend to not draw correctly, because for the third ray, what I'm going to draw is a ray that is aiming at that focus. So it comes across like this, okay? Now, it would connect or uh, continue as a dotted line there, but it can't because only uh, refracted or reflected rays can be extended. So now we go to the, here, I'll move it like this so you can see it a bit better. We go to the rule of parallel to the principal axis. Oh, well, sorry, I didn't extend that quite far enough. Give me just a moment here. This is what I get for looking upside down at things with my hands in the way. And there it is, a refracted ray that I can extend back behind. So there's my incident ray that was going for this focal point, clear on the other side, and it refracts when it hits the lens parallel to the principal axis, my refracted ray can be extended behind. And you can see they're all crossing at that point. I'm kind of guessing now you can also see why that rule isn't probably the best one to draw when you're drawing these to try to see how your image appears. Uh, but basically that's what you should be looking at when you're trying to draw your both concave diverging lenses such as this and convex converging lenses like the first one that I showed you. Try drawing a few yourself, put the object in some different spots, see how that affects things, make it taller, smaller, things like that, and just uh, kind of get the practice of drawing some yourself.